My criteria is kind of, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, when you look at a record and go, what the fuck? I'm definitely a collector. I've always collected and not just records. I've collected books, comics, art, all toys, all sorts of stuff. I, I'm quite happy to go into a record store or a, a market and look and not come away with anything because the joy is the looking. That's the compulsion, really. It's not like I must have a record, I must buy a record. Uh, it's the, it's the, the thrill of the hunt, really. Let's play this craft work. This is one of the Russian discs. Take that out. Wow, and you can imagine that was the quality that they had to deal with. Well, the Flex Disc was a sort of free um, sound sheet, as they called it. There were two main companies that, that made them that you'll find, which was Evertone in the States, which went out of business in 2000. And then uh, there was Lintone over in the UK, um, which I think was going from the late 50s into the late 80s. They were just incredibly cheap ways to include audio with things by they were usually inserted into books, magazines. They were very rarely actually given away by the music industry until later. You'd find them in sort of Reader's Digest used to do sets of them. And, uh, there was a magazine in the 80s called Flexi Pop, which gave a seven inch Flexi away with um, unique tracks with every issue. And that was the selling point of the magazine. It was just a pop magazine. Good thing about Flexi Discs is they don't take up very much room. It's, the, it's a sort of tourist guide to caves. Our universe space kit, National Geographic comes with a little space telescope, obviously not that, literally, <laughs> space sounds. There's a lot of postcard records about places, original coloured records for kids. Listen with Rustler, porno, <laughs> on a flexi disc. It was a Doom one. High Fidelity Monthly with Playboy, another porno one. This is Marilyn Chambers getting down on myself for you. Telling you what it takes to turn me on. Typically, when you get a medium like that, it gets exploited and people do weird things with it. You start to find adverts for crisps and things like that and dog food. They would get folded and then they wouldn't play. The sound, sound was not, never great. You could do them in different colours. They could be transparent, they could be green, red, blue, purple. With flexes, you get weird things like you get the Magic Cube, which is <clears throat> this. There's very little information about it on the web, but it was this package that I think came out in the early 80s, possibly with a magazine, double-sided, 10-inch flexi-disc of psych and garage music. If you had the elastic band mechanism inside sprung up out of the box when you opened it <laughs> uh, with the track list on it. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Squeeze record, Tempest Storm. Advice for young women. Step Kids one from Stone's Throw. It's a craft work track, Boim Boom Chuck, but just pressed on a Russian flexi with it. There's an advert for bacon. Petrol records, Father Abrafart and the Smurfs, which is Jonathan King commenting on the gas crisis in the form of the Smurfs. A Christmas card with a record. This is a weird one. It's Salvador Dali advertising a French bank. Kenny Everett and Michael Aspel talking about love. DJ Food. Discovery Workshop. That's my own entry into the Flexi Disc. Bird Sounds. I used to get these little books of bird sounds and you'd actually put the book on the turntable. You've got a hole straight through the middle. TR909 demo disc with Schooly D on it. Brain Cellar Surgery Sampler with Art by H.R. Giga. This is the best flexies about flexi. This is the Human League. They're actually in the studio talking about what they should put on the flexi disc that's free with the, the single. There's no music on it at all. It's just them talking about what should be good. The funny thing about the flexi disc is there's, there's very little sentimental attachment to a lot of them. I have them because they're the objects they are. They're, they're like an ornament almost in the collection. They're not always there for the music or even or if there is even any music, but the, my collection to me is definitely part of me. You know, without it, I'd feel like there was something missing. It would be interesting to know if I could live without it. I'm sure I could. There, there's a few things that I'd, I'd want to say, but um, I don't know, it's, that, that it's an essential part of me. Not the all of me, of course, but 
I'd save my children before my records. 